Hello there, duelists. Sometimes the world can be a dark place, and with so much going on, it feels fitting to play a deck that would fit into such a grim world. Which is why today we have Dark World on the playmat. Having fairly recently celebrated their 16th birthday, releasing in Elemental Energy in 2005, Dark World are definitely getting on a bit in terms of archetype age. But have had new recruits to the Dark World army since that point, fairly you know consistently on and off I suppose. So let's scout them out and see if they can be a danger to your opponent's life points. Okay, so let's meet our army. So first up, we've got three Grafa, or Graf, yeah Grafa. Damn it, um, the Dragon Lord of Dark World. So, Dark Worlds have got an absolute monstrosity of problem-solving card text, so I'm going to kind of just basically say what they do rather than actually, you know, reading off the, the card text, because I can't... I, anyone who picks these guys up knows that the card text is absolute garbage. Basically, if a graffer is discarded by a card effect, um, you can pop a card your opponent controls. And while it's in the graveyard, you can bounce a Dark World card that you control, sorry, a monster that you control back to the hand in order to special summon it from the graveyard. Neither of those are once per turn, so it's pretty good. Um, the downside for Dark Worlds is that they don't activate for um, discarding for costs, so stuff like uh, trading or Karma Cut, if you were ever using that, or Raigeki Break, stuff like that, will not trigger Dark Worlds. They have to be discarded by an effect. So from there, we've got three Snow. So Snow is our kind of uh, searcher. So, uh, if Snow is discarded, you can um, search a Dark World card. And that doesn't include, doesn't exclude herself. It's not once per turn. So this card is just great, and you definitely want to see it. From there, we're running three Beige. So Beige is simple. He can just be special summoned if he's discarded. And from there, we've got our final um, Dark World monster. So we've got three Brow. And if he's discarded, then uh, you get to draw a card. So he can be a great way of kind of replenishing those lost costs. From there, we're playing a fairly sizable dark, uh, sorry, danger engine. So we're playing uh, two danger Bigfoot. So the dangers all work kind of in the same way, where you reveal the danger from your hand, then you your opponent randomly picks a card from um, from that from your hand. You discard the chosen card from your opponent. If it is the danger monster that you revealed, then it just goes to the graveyard. If it's not that one, then you get to special summon it and draw a card. And then they all have an effect where if they're discarded, they get to do a thing. So danger big four, if it's discarded, target one face up card your opponent control and um, destroy it. Danger Thunderbird, very similar, apart from its face down cards. So these two are level eight, Graph is level eight, so that works very well with our kind of rank eight engine. From there, we're also playing um, two Nessie, so Nessie, if it's discarded, searches you a danger card. Uh, from there, we're playing two Danger Mothman. So these are some of the smaller ones. Um, and one Danger uh, Chupacabra. So Mothman is a Dark World Dealings. Um, so if it's discarded, you get to draw and discard a card, but your opponent also does that as well. And Chupacabra, if it's discarded, you get to special summon a danger monster from your graveyard back um, to your field. Um, Tubercar actually goes off quite a bit more than I suppose your average kind of danger engine just because you're running so many dangers. And then finally we're running one danger jackalope and one danger attached to Noko. So Snek can special summon itself back if it's discarded and jackalope special summons one a danger monster from the deck if it's discarded. From there I really wanted to play a normal summon monster that would have a high impact um, and I really knew that it was going to be um, Tall guy from the underworld, um, just because it feels like it's it's so fitting, um, and so so you know, tall guide when it's summoned, you can special summon um, a fiend, level three fiend from your hand or deck, but negates effects. I knew that, that that you know that's an immediate plus one, but but where to go from that? I needed some inspiration, and I found it um, on um, a deck profile. On, I think it's ygeopro.deck. Um, but it was basically playing Doom Dog and uh, Goki Pole. I had had looked at Goki Pole before, but Doom Dog definitely. Made everything kind of come together. So you summon your tour guide, you summon your Doom Dog, you link those two away. Doom Dog then allows you to add a 
a level 8 fiend monster from your deck to your hand if it's sent from the field to the graveyard. I think it's for um, the element or the earthbound or the earthbound immortals or something like that. I can't quite remember. But anyway, it works perfectly because Graf is a level 8 fiend, so you get to add a Graf. Then you can go to Cherubini. Cherubini can send the Goki Pole. When Goki Pole is sent to the graveyard, you can have a level 4 insect, which happens to be Mothman. So you get a Mothman and a um, Grapher, and you've got a Cherubini on the field. So that's kind of like a plus something silly. Um, depending on if you count link raisings, it's like a plus three, but if you count card advantage, you count a plus twoing. Um, so yeah, it's a really good way of kind of rounding off. And because you're drawing so much because of this deck, you actually see Tor Guide quite a lot more than you probably would do just on average, you know, draw, drawing from ratios. So as you can tell from the monster section, that was, you know, a fair chunk of the deck. Um, so let's have a look at quickly have a look at the support. So we've got um, the Gates of Dark World. So this is a field spell that I think came out in the structure deck. Um, don't quote me on that one though. It's a really good card. So all fiend type monsters gain 300 attack and defense. And then once per turn, you can banish fiend type monster from your graveyard, discard one fiend monster, and then draw a card. So it's a great way of, of triggering your fiend monsters um, from your hand um, and and targeted as well. So it's not the randomness that that um, that dangers give you. Um, Another kind of draw card to go with that is the Dark World Dealings. So this is each player d draws one card and then discards one card. You're obviously going to trigger your Dark World cards off this, but you do have to be aware that yeah, you know your opponent's definitely going to get some some pluses, shall we say, off this because you're giving them you know cycling and being able to, for them to get rid of cards that they may may not want otherwise. From there, I'm playing two trade-ins and one Danger Response Team. So. Trading's pretty simple. Discard one level eight monster, draw two cards. So this doesn't trigger graph, but it does get in the graveyard because sometimes in the hand it's not actually that useful. It does trigger the bigger dangers, but often I'll find myself wanting to trigger, you know, to act to, to summon the big dangers rather than trade them in. But it's definitely an option. I think that I have considered bumping trading up to three. Danger response team is interesting. Some people have seen play at two, which I could I could definitely see. Um, it's kind of got two effects, both of them are kind of um, really decent, I would say, um, and can be activable, act uh, activatable. Um, both of them can be activatable in the same turn. So you can target a danger monster you control and one monster on the field and return them both to the hand. Um, so that's great, you know, it's good removal, you know, kind of compulsive-esque effect. And then if it's in the graveyard, you can um, discard a danger monster from your hand to shuffle that back into the deck and draw a card. Um, which is a great way of kind of triggering off specific dangers you want and just getting a bit more draw power, which this deck kind of doesn't really struggle with at all. But, um, you know, I think it's uh, it's also searchable via Nessie as well. So now we've got one Monster Reborn, one Upstart Goblin. So, you know, this is kind of just extension, you know, basic draw power. And then Card Destruction, which is the, what, it's the card that I've kind of... I have a love-hate relationship with Card Destruction. I think the thing, when you see it and you've got a hand that fits it, it's perfect. But often... I find myself not really wanting it to be there. So, I mean, you can be the gauge, um, but you know, I find that card destruction, I think there's definitely times where I've toyed with just playing it as a trade-in rather than you know playing card destruction. Okay, and uh, on to the extra deck. So we're playing um, kind of a suite of XYZs and a suite of link monsters. So we're playing two uh, rank fours, um, so, we've got Evil Swarm Nightmare and number 60 Degaris the Timeless. So, Evil Swarm Nightmare, twice per turn, it can flip a special summon monster face down. Um, so, I think these two are kind of for different things. Evil Swarm Nightmare is when you've kind of finished your board, but you're kind of stuck with a couple of monsters that you don't really have anything else to do with. Evil Swarm Nightmare is a great two disruption in, in one card. Degaris the Timeless is normally your extender. Um, so he can detach two to special someone from the graveyard. He can detach two to her draw two and discard one. Um, he can also increase attack and blah, 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 blah. Um, you've got to be aware of his um, kind of condition that when you activate his effects, he skips relevant draw phases and if you, or relevant phases, should I say. And if you don't abide by that, that can be an immediate game loss. From there, we've got quite a sizable chunk of uh, rank eights. So we've got... Uh, the uh, Dingrisu, we've got number 90, the Galaxy Ice Final Lord, and um, number 97, Dragoobleon. So, 
Dingo Stew is mostly used for sending, so it's a non-target send, which is something this deck doesn't really have access to outside of, um, I suppose, going into the battle phase. Um, Galaxy has Photon Lord, it's just a monster negate on legs, it's just a, a great extra body that you can put on. And Dragoobleon um, can target two dragon number monsters in your extra deck and special summon one of them with the other attached to it. So we're playing Hope Harbinger and we're playing um, Neo Galaxy Ice Tachyon Dragon. So Neo Galaxy Ice Tachyon Dragon is a 4,500 beta, um, so if you need that then that's that's there. Um, most of the time you'll be going to Hope Harbinger which can you know negate um, spell a trap once per turn and attach it um, and it also offers battle protection so it can redirect attacks to it which isn't once per turn um, and this comes up for um, some of the other extra deck cards that we're playing and Dragoobleon can't or can also not be targeting 3000 so he's, he's not a bad card at all and then finally we've got um, double Azus. so if you attack with an extra Azus monster dump this on top and then you, you know you've kind of got disruption um, you know non-target non-destruction you know removal which is obviously a great card which is um, why so many people are playing it. From there we've got a few uh, link monsters so we've got Salmon Great Almirage so this is kind of for linking off uh, stuff that kind of just gets um, stuck on field so this is you know Doom Dog or um, Goki Pole. Um, Doom Dog actually if you use the field spell doesn't qualify for Almirage so you do have to be careful with that. From there our link twos are Cherubini so this can send a level three months from deck to graveyard nightmare phoenix which can you know discard to pop a back row when it's summoned um that can trigger the dangers but can't trigger the dark worlds ip mascarena so to link in your opponent's turn and then finally some bigger links so we've got nightmare unicorn seriouser skull dread and appalooza bow of the goddess so nightmare unicorn's kind of for ip um mascarena and you know disruption in your opponent's turn so i use your school dread i don't know I, I think you could definitely put an access code talker i think that would be an easy replacement um but i quite like sometimes you just end up with a random assortment of um levels and you know types and stuff like that and sorry your school dread can be a good way of digging for extra resources if you're going for a certain specific kind of uh, end board but often I find myself just going directly to Appalooza because Appalooza's, you know, multi-negate just deals with a lot of decks, you know, in the current, you know, in the current game, I would say. Even though it's lost some prevalence in recent times. So, concluding. Dark World are a bit of a nightmare to rate. The random nature of the danger element can leave you having discarded pretty much everything but without really anything to show for it. However, both on the play and on the draw, the deck can break and set a board. So I'm kind of playing it down the middle for the relevance with a three. Dark worlds are fun to play, no doubt. Any deck with this amount of kind of like drawing and randomness definitely gets my mind going for the combo lines. You've just got to be really careful with kind of the big dangers fizzling and utilizing kind of your um, normal summon appropriately. So, it's a 4 for the fun factor. I was quite pleased to see this deck wasn't ludicrously expensive. I've budgeted this build at about $260, which isn't a steal, but isn't bad for the power output either. So, is Dark World worth visiting, or is it just an overblown tourist attraction? Let me know, and thanks for watching.